You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler and my guest joining me today is Jeff Patil. Jeff's the Managing Director of Invacare Australia and New Zealand and joins us on the phone. Jeff, welcome to Health Professional Radio. Oh, thank you, Wayne. Thanks for inviting me. It's a pleasure to have you on. Jeff, tell us a little bit about Invacare. It's not the kind of name that instantly tells me what you do, so explain a little bit about your product range and could you tell us about your geographic footprint too, where it is that you service? Uh, yes, certainly. Uh, so Invacare is a global leader in the provision of um, equipment, particularly for home care um, and institutional care. So that's the long-term care facility group um, that you see as well as uh, in-home. Um, the primary products that we manufacture ourselves and uh, distribute within Australia and New Zealand um, are the mobility and seating range of products, so complex power and manual wheelchairs, beds, mattresses, uh, hoist lifting devices, hygiene or aids to daily living products and oxygen therapy um, primarily. Our geographic footprint um, in Australia is our head office is based in Sydney um, and we use a dealer network throughout Australia to service our customer base and in New Zealand we are based in Auckland and we are direct in the market over in Auckland although we do have um, a dealer base that we're using, particularly on the home care side of our of our business, but it's a slightly different model in New Zealand versus Australia, largely to, to the uh, healthcare funding model that exists there versus Australia. I see. And and Jeff, in Australia, are you a supplier to both the institutional market and the private market? Yes, we are. And, and the same in New Zealand. Yes, and the same in New Zealand. I guess uh, with the range of products I've seen on your website, the aged care market is a big uh, a big market for you, but I'm also assuming that it extends out to other people who just have issues that limit their mobility and their ability to, to uh, get in and out of bathtubs and such. Yes, absolutely. So we, we uh, our primary product range goes to both the disability sector as well as the age sector. Um, but a lot of the product that is available for... Uh, people that are in home or aging in place uh, is also available for, the, available for those um, who either have a congenital disability um, or develop a um, disability later in life such as MS mm-hmm. um, or those that are caused by an accident such as a car accident yeah. or a mountain biking accident or something similar. So mm-hmm. um, that's how the product is, is broadly across those two areas. Um, our brand promise is making life experiences possible. So what we're always trying to do is get people um, to be involved uh, and able to contribute back into society in the way that they uh, want to or used to um, and will still want to be able to. Now, Jeff, many of our listeners are clinicians, uh, normally in acute care. About 95% of our audience are in that acute care space, although we do have a growing aged care audience as well for um, institutional aged care. What's the message that you'd like clinicians to take away from our chat today? Well, it's, uh, it's interesting that you talk about um, most of your clinicians being in acute care. Um, a lot of uh, the clinicians that we talk to, particularly occupational therapists and physiotherapists, are obviously working very closely in um, the aged care sector and the disability sector. And um, one of the things that I would like them to take away is that um, as a manufacturer of, manufacturer of um, products for the that industry, that we have a strong um, commitment and responsibility to providing training and education um, to those therapists so that they are best equipped to um, support the people that need the equipment and also that um, we have a strong uh, responsibility to educate um, consumers or users of our product so that they are informed and are able to tell their therapists what they require. I guess, or what they need to help their life um, be easier. You're listening to Health Professional Radio. My name is Wayne Buckler, and I'm in conversation with Jeff Pertill. Jeff is the Managing Director of Invacare Australia and New Zealand, and we've been talking about the Invacare range of products that support um, the aged care sector and the disability sector and support lifestyle and mobility. Jeff, one of the... um, 
uh, favourite questions of mine is about misconceptions, and I guess in every industry there are misconceptions. So amongst your customers and clients, what's the biggest misconception about your product range that drives you nuts and keeps you awake at night? Um, that's a really good question, and uh, it's it's a really interesting one, um, especially where you're based, Lane. Um, I think the thing that really uh, keeps me awake or concerns me the most is this perception that suppliers and um, customers that are supporting the users are somehow rotting the system and, and ripping them off and the product in Australia is much more expensive than it is overseas. Mm-hmm. There was the uh, QCA report last year into um, pricing the assistive technology equipment sector uh, and one of the key findings which was um, buried in about page 25 of that report was that in actual fact, the equipment in Australia was uh, between 20 and 25 percent cheaper than what was available uh, overseas. So it is something that we grapple with a lot uh, in our industry and in the marketplace. Uh, the perception that somehow um, dealers and suppliers are, are gouging those um, less fortunate, I guess. So that is um, something that we work very hard um, as a supplier of equipment to you know to to overcome and to provide product that's good quality, uh, good product and, and at good cost. That's uh, but it is something that is a, a challenge in the industry. That's a that's an interesting uh, perception. I I wasn't aware that there was this idea that it was unreasonably expensive uh, in Australia. Any idea what's led to that uh, marketplace perception? A lot of it's been around the uh, availability of product online. Uh, mm-hmm. Particularly if you uh, if you go online and you, you see how much a sports wheelchair is, a recreational wheelchair is um, on a, on certain uh, online websites, you would be forgiven to by um, to if you thought that the price was cheaper. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, they're obviously in a different currency um, often, and they um, don't include things like freight. Um, yeah. They also don't include things like what happens if it doesn't fit you when you get it here um, or you need to service or repair or maintain it um, along its uh, lifetime. So those those prices are not factored in, nor is um, what I said earlier about the training and education uh, yeah. that we provide to therapists and end users on the product, which uh, unfortunately isn't free. Um, so we need, to, we need to pay for that and, and that comes from having adequate margin in your product. Yeah, I, I think one of the things that a lot of Australians uh, don't readily realise is the difference in uh, the level of care that occurs in Australia with things like the, the, the Therapeutic Goods Administration um, licensing for products and the uh, uh, the requirement for uh, consumers to be protected, which Australian industry seems to to do an excellent job of keeping people safe and keeping people in product that that doesn't break and doesn't collapse and doesn't cause a further injury, which in a lot of overseas countries, it's just buyer beware. Yeah, that's exactly right. Um, you know, the, the cost of compliance and regulation in Australia is significantly higher than it is in other, you know, in other markets for sure. Um, and, but we do see, um, more products being imported. And so, um, one of the other areas that we would like to see some Work around is around the supplier accreditation um, mm-hmm. and the work that um, the assistive technology um, supplier association is is working on as well. Um, a model that they put together around supplier accreditation and making sure that the um, equipment that is provided meets certain standards um, and isn't just imported from um, lower cost regions um, and not meeting those certain certain quality standards. So that is one of the challenges as well. Well, with a little bit of luck, Jeff, today we can help with that misconception among some of our listeners at least. How do people get in touch with you? Um, they can get in touch with me uh, through uh, by my email address, which I'm happy to share to your listeners. Yeah, sure. It's uh, gpertil at invacare.com.au or .co.nz. Um, and our... Um, one eight hundred number in Australia is one eight hundred four six zero four six zero. Um if anyone wants to uh, get any further information they can certainly email or ring me and I'd be happy to answer whatever questions I could.
Now, I'm always getting in trouble for mentioning phone numbers without warning people, so fair warning listeners, pencils ready. That number again in Australia was 1800 460 460, and the website is www.invacare, I N V A C A R E, invacare.com.au in Australia, and invacare.co.nz in New Zealand. Did I get all that right, Jeff? You did well. Very well done. Only one thing worse than mentioning numbers and websites too quickly is when I get them wrong when I repeat them. But I'll, I try hard. I do try hard. Awesome. Jeff, thank you for your time today. It's been a pleasure having you on with us. Thank you, Wayne. I appreciate the uh, opportunity to share um, some views with your listeners and uh, to any feedback that anyone has. And if you've just joined us on Health Professional Radio, uh, you've just missed my conversation with... Jeff Patil, the Managing Director of Invacare Australia and New Zealand. But the good news is we have a transcript on our website. We also have a SoundCloud archive and you can find the sound archive on YouTube as well. Our website is www.hpr.fm. This is Wayne Buckler for Health Professional Radio.